There have been a number of new telephoto lenses released over the last few years that are alternatives to buying big, expensive f4 lenses. Canon's recent release of the 200-800mm lens had me thinking a lot about this topic, so I decided to make this video for anyone that may be trying to decide on what lens to buy. This video is not intended to criticize any lenses, it's simply meant to show anyone the exact effects that smaller aperture lenses have on settings and provide examples of exactly what a photo will look like at different apertures so that you'll have a better idea of what to expect from your lens. While I was in Florida recently, I was photographing a kingfisher who was nice enough to cooperate long enough to allow me to take some sample photos. All these photos were taken at the same 600 millimeter focal length using the same shutter speed, which we'll dive into shortly. The first photo is taken at f4. The background, as you can see, is completely smoothed out, showing almost no details of the distant trees. The second photo, which was at f6.3, doesn't appear all that much different than f4, just ever so slightly more detail in the shapes in the background. Up next at f8, we can now start to see more patches of color in the background as depth of field increases. Finally, at f11, there is noticeably more background detail. My first thought about this is I would honestly be happy with any of these results, and the background look is completely subjective as some people prefer the creamy backgrounds and others want more environmental type shots. However, the look of the background is not the only effect that the aperture will have on the photos. I took each one of these photos just seconds apart from each other in manual mode with auto ISO engaged at a constant shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. What I want to focus on is how the ISO changes as we go from F4 to F11. As you can see at F4, we are at 320 ISO, but as we move to F6.3, we see a jump to 640 ISO. At F8, we are now up to 1250 to maintain the same proper exposure. And lastly, at F11, we are now at 2500 ISO, which is a huge difference from the photo we started at at F4. So back into Lightroom, as we look at the photos side by side here, you can really see a good comparison when you look at them next to each other of how the background changes between each aperture. This will kind of give you more of a realistic expectation of what to expect when you're looking into a lens. F4 is going to be a huge difference from F11, as you can clearly see here. Uh, something else we're going to notice is the amount of grain or ISO noise that we're going to see in each photo as we move along. Uh, with the F4 photo being on the left, as we get up to the F8 photo on the right, you can start to see a little bit more noise or some grain there uh, in the background patches. But where we're really going to notice this difference as we zoom in here, um, once we get up into the F11 photo, that was, again, remember, you're looking at the F11 photo is 2500 ISO versus the F4 photo, which was 320 ISO. This is going to be a significant change in uh, depth of field, as well as the amount of grain and noise we're going to see in the background. So I hope these examples kind of help you in maybe deciding which lens may be right for you. Again, it's not meant to be cons of any of these lenses. Obviously, the pros are the uh, expense is going to be significantly less than buying an f4 lens it's also going to be so much easier to travel and to walk around with one of these smaller lenses again my only intention here is to just kind of give an example of what each photo look, looks like at each aperture and how that's going to affect your settings because i know when i was newer in this field there wasn't a lot of examples like this to look for so again um, i hope this just helps anybody out there that may be interested in knowing any of this information so thanks for watching